G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday sort of lunchtime here in Australia. Market has bounced back ever so slightly, up just under 1%, so back to $2.12 trillion, which is nice. Bitcoin dominance risen ever so slightly, volume down, uh, yep, kind of to be expected a little bit. People have finished with their selling, a little bit of buying has sort of been happening. Uh, Bitcoin price, again, just under 49,000, getting back towards you know, 50-ish thousand, but there still could be some more downside. We'll have to wait and see. And gas price is down just a little bit. I think this was $4.30, $4.26 yesterday. So still not great, but not awful. And we will talk about uh, some of the reasons why this can uh, affect Ethereum in the long run. All right, there we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag. We've got some things that are up a little bit. Again, you know, not quite 1%. And then some things that are down a little bit. So it's all over the place. What's performed well in the last 24 hours though? What's the best mover in the top 100? Right, Ravain, 23%, nice. Safe Moon, again, that number almost never changes. I don't understand how that really works, but it's up 20%, good Lord. Uh, Tezos, out of nowhere, like hardly heard anything about Tezos in a long, long time. It's up 20%. Mana, nice move, pancake swap. Bitcoin Cash, Perp. Look, a couple of nice gains there. A couple of good double-digit gains and a couple of sort of high single-digit gains and then we're into just the mid and low single-digit gains. And again, you'll take any gain any day over a loss. But what about the losses though? What in the top 100 hasn't performed so well? All right, AVAX uh, on its way down. Uh, Luna on its way down. Graph uh, trading a little bit sort of sideways. Audius trading a little bit sideways, and Luna kind of really trading sideways, but mainly AVAX uh, is coming back down. It pumped so hard that, of course, uh, it was going to uh, have a pullback. And look, even R uh, Rune or Thorchain having a bit of a pullback, and we got a story about that shortly, uh, and how DeFi is doing in general. So again, a couple of gains, a couple of losses, but you know, pretty much sort of sideways movement, really. Not a whole lot happening. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, so again, still in this upwards trending channel that we've been in for a really long time. We trade out of it occasionally for a while, both to the upside and the downside, but now we're back in it. And we can see that we did have that pullback, but then it sort of bounced back. I mean, it got down to sort of 40, let's say, what would that be? 47,000, and then we're back up at 48,000. But I think it is totally possible that again, we come back and sort of touch this line. Now, it could be over the weekend or something, but there's no guarantees in life, and I'm not offering you financial advice. I'm just saying that this is what I'm keeping a lookout for. But the best news is we are just staying above that 200-day uh, moving average. Now, what we can throw in there is moving average, and let's go. There's the 50-day moving average. So the 50-day moving average is starting to close in on that 200-day moving average. We've still got a ways to go. I would say, you know, if Bitcoin kind of stays the way it is, we might be another sort of week or two away from getting the crossover that we really want. But at the moment, as long as the 50-day moving average stays under the 200-day moving average, this could quite easily roll over uh, and continue another bearish trend. We still haven't broken. Again, you know, we really need to get above that kind of $52,000 level for us to be fairly confident that this isn't a fake out because this could be still a fake out. We, You know, again, look how close we've gotten. So we come up, get so close, and then it all just rolls over. Totally possible. Uh, not probable in my book, but again, that's just my personal opinion, never financial advice. All right, just a couple of stories I wanted to focus on. Look, the UK FCA has finally settled its regulatory issues with Binance. This is actually really big news for Binance. Hopefully, this is the first of you know the rest of the countries that have an issue with Binance, in particular US. You know, of them just un, you know getting it all sorted and Binance being able to move forwards. And you know, we did bring the story that you know Binance Singapore. Yesterday, I brought that story. The Binance Singapore, I mean, I didn't, you know, 
<laughs> make this. I find all the news, but I reported it to you. So, Bi- Singapore Binance, sorry, Binance Singapore. I am struggling. I'm still really sick. If you can't hear it, they have got a new CEO, and he's an ex-regulator to try and help them get through their regulatory issues that they're having all over the world. So, hopefully, this is all going to start happening, and this means Binance can finally, you know, start to move forwards because I think there's a lot of yeah, sort of things are going to hinder it at the moment. You know, they are aren't in the financial cartel that Bitboy talks about uh, at times, uh, and so they that's why they are coming after, uh, being come after so heavy by regular by regular regulators all around the world. But hopefully, this is the sign that things are about to get a lot better for them. All right, Axie Infinity. So people have been talking. There's been a number of news stories, I should say, that people in sort of developing nations have been actually making a living from playing crypto games. Well, Philippines tax agency targets Axie Infinity players. It's taxable subject, uh, saying it's taxable and subject to income tax. So the Philippines Bureau of Internal Revenue, so the BIR, is focusing on the blockchain powered game Axie Infinity over tax concerns. BIR is looking into methods aimed at capturing uh, Axie Infinity players failing to pay their income taxes. So it probably all seemed too good to be true at first. I can play you know, these games and just make this free money. Well, it's not going to be so free anymore and even a little bit less free. Number one, you've got to pay for electricity, so it's not free. Number two, you've got to buy the game, so it's not free. And number three, now you're going to have to pay your taxes on it. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is means it's no good. I'm just saying that this is the kind of thing that we're going to face with regulators and things like that. There's not going to be free money. I can tell you right now, it's just not going to exist. It doesn't matter how you sort of make money or gains, whatever you want to call it, uh, in cryptocurrencies, eventually... It is going to be taxed and regulators are going to get their piece. And you just have to be comfortable with that and understand that that is the way this becomes mainstream and we move forward. Those things are never going to stop. Taxes are here forever. It's like that saying, you know, there's uh, two things in life that are certain. uh, Taxes and death. Eventually you're going to die uh, and you are going to pay taxes. And now we can see that, you know, this is just one place, but this is one of the places where Axie Infinity was really big, was in the Philippines. And people were making, I think a living is what I read. Some people were making a living off playing the game. And that's probably because they weren't even thinking about taxes, but now it looks like the tax man will be coming after them. We'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. Right, last but not least, DeFi has been, you know, pumping a little bit lately, but it's been quiet considering to where it was much earlier but DeFi TVL hits a record of 157 billion dollars as ethereum competitor competitors attract investors and this is due to fees and things like that it's not only fees and again you know we go over here and the gas fee there we go it's four four dollars eighty now it's only three dollars before this needs to get sorted sooner rather than later and again we're all just hanging on that east 2.0 to finally get rolled out there is talks that it could happen later this year, like, you know, maybe sort of October, November, December, uh, if not sort of early 2022, they're saying. Uh, again, it just won't come soon enough because all the competitors are starting to gain ground because of this. This is for a basic transaction. You're going to pay $4.80, a basic one. You jump on Uniswap or something like that and try and do a uh, complex uh, smart contract transaction, you can you can throw another zero on there, if not even a little bit more. So all of a sudden it becomes uh, forty eight dollars uh, to do one of those. Now again, we go down here, and data shows that a majority of the top ten DeFi tokens gained more than twenty percent in the last thirty days. So they are starting to heat up a little bit. But look, all coins have started to heat up a little bit in the last thirty days, but DeFi is starting to make its comeback with projects like Bancor and Thor RuneChain, which we looked at having a bit of a retracement, saw gains in excess of 115% in the last 30 days. So that is very, very interesting. Don't sleep on DeFi. Everything's been NFT uh, for a while, but you gotta see that things are starting to move in cycles now. So you go through you know, the big uh, base chain layers, they get their pumps, so Bitcoin, Polygon, 
Cardano, Ethereum, things like that, then it'll sort of move on. And it's not that those things suddenly die, but then again, they go after NFTs and now they go after uh, DeFi by the looks of it. DeFi will start to pump up and then it'll move on to social tokens and then it'll just swing right around and that's the way it'll sort of cycle. Not in that exact order, but that's the way things will go. They're going to be jumping around and it's up to you know smart investors to try and pick what's going to go next, buy things at the low, and then take some profits when they get uh, into the highs. If that's your kind of thing, if you're kind of trying to do the swing trading, if you're just an investor, then just look to buy things that are on the dips uh, and hold. I mean, eventually, you know, you're going to want to sell uh, to do other things with that, but you know, get your capital back uh, and then just let the less let the rest ride. All right, that's it for me. I do apologize. I still really am under the weather. I've got a cold or a flu at the moment. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Hopefully it's not COVID, but anyway, I've gone and had my test and I should know in 24 to 48 hours. But that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.